If you've just stepped up into a newly promoted HR business partner role, or you've just landed a new HR business partner role, or even rethinking in your existing HR business partner role as to how you can do your job differently and how you can re-engage with your stakeholders differently, how you can present your work differently, this video is for you. Today, I want to share with you how you can set yourself up for success from day one by using my new platform called hrbpkit.com. It's been specifically designed for HR business partners operating at all levels, helping us come up with amazing people plans that address various team and or departmental challenges that we can present in a quite impactful way. This platform and tools created as part of this platform will help you deliver value, gain credibility, and more importantly, articulate the impact you've made in your role. And I'll walk you through exactly how it works, taking you through a step-by-step -step process by discussing a case study. When we start in a new HR business partner role and new organization, it's easy to get stuck into the weeds and end up being busy straight away, attending a number of meetings and feeling the pain of not knowing where to go to and how to start actually segmenting and addressing the business areas we need to work with quite successfully. But our real value really starts with how we diagnose, prioritize and align with the business early on. Now, let's go through a case study and pretend we've just got a brand new job, we've just joined a new organization, and we now need to get our head around as to how we would approach certain people challenges and opportunities. So let's pretend we are going to be working for a company called Techno Engineering, which is a mid-sized engineering firm with a growing focus on digital and AI solutions. Traditionally known for its hardware products, the company is undergoing a digital and AI transformation to stay competitive. The software engineering department consists of 80 employees across the UK and Eastern Europe. It's now at the heart of delivering this strategy. The organization has secured two major contracts requiring increased delivery speed, innovative thinking and higher cross-team collaboration. The CTO, the chief technology officer, is under pressure to deliver against tight milestones and she knows that people challenges are starting to undermine certain progress. In terms of the reported challenges we which you are very likely to get from initial one-to-one -one meetings with the relevant stakeholder. In this particular case, it's the C CTO. So in recent months, several issues have surfaced. Number one, attrition and talent bottlenecks. So it's been reported that mid and senior level engineers are leaving for tech firms, offering more flexibility and clear career paths. Replacements take three to four months to hire slobbing delivery. Second challenge is people management gaps. Very common by the way. So it's been reported that engineering managers are technically brilliant, but time poor and inexperienced in performance ma management, career conversations and coaching. Most haven't had leadership training. Number three, burnout and low morale is also present. Teams are over overloaded. Engagement surveys show a 10 point drop in morale. Engineers feel they're on a treadmill with little space for learning and innovation. The next challenge is hybrid working challenges. Challenges. Collaboration between the UK and Eastern Europe teams is quite weak. Teams rarely meet in person and misalignment on priorities is growing. In terms of our approach as a new HR business partner in this particular organization, we need to begin with a clear strategy grounded in diagnostics, alignment, co-creation with our business leaders and managers and impact. Let's say we are now required to understand what's going on and pull together a people plan that we need to present to the CTO and software development leadership team. If I was to find myself in this situation, this is how I would approach my role. So I'll break it down into following four phases. Phase one is, let's call it diagnose and understand. So we need to run a discovery phase. Clearly, a lot of information has been provided in these initial one-to-one -one meetings, but we now need to understand as to what is actually going on, underpinned by relevant data and evidence. So as part of our discovery phase, we could be having one-to-one -one meetings with the relevant engineering manager perhaps we could have skip level interviews with engineers. We could also review exit interview themes and hiring data if available, conduct deep dive analysis into team engagement survey responses if previous employee engagement surveys are available,
available, and we could also attend their business meetings or sprint review meetings, which is commonly known in software development teams and retrospectives to observe dynamics and, and how they're communicating together. What we are very likely to uncover, we may uncover that engineers want growth and recognition, but they don't know what is actually possible. Let's say managers are reactive, firefighting rather than leading. And finally, the team may feel fragmented, more like silos than a cohesive department. Now, in terms of phase two, which would be all about defining business aligned people priorities. So let's say we meet with, with the CTO to align on business goals. And together, we now need to translate some of these business goals into HR outcomes. So let's say this particular CTO tells you that she's got the following business goals in mind. Number one, deliver digital products on time. She wants to increase innovation. She wants to scale leadership capacity, and she wants to improve reputation as the employer. What does this mean in terms of people focus? So if there is an aspiration to actually deliver digital products on time in terms of people focus, let's say we could propose to look at how we can retain key technical talent. Number two is all about increasing innovation. So if, they, if this is what they want to achieve, I could be suggesting and discussing with them as to how we could prevent burnout and create time to learn if they want to increase this innovation as a business goal and objective. Objective. Number three is all about scaling leadership capacity. So if they want to achieve this, I may say, let's talk about how we could upskill our engineering managers. And final point is about if they want to improve reputation as the employer, then I would be thinking about and discussing with them how we could strengthen EVP or employee value proposition and how we could attract diverse talent. Phase three is all about co-creating a people plan with our business leaders and managers. So co creating means we are going to be working with them to develop this people plan together, but they will expect me to lead on it and pull it together. And as I mentioned, usually when you join a new company and you partner mid and senior level departments and teams, they will expect some sort of guidance, views and ideas from you as to what they need to be doing differently or thinking about. And as best practice, it's good to create a people plan that has a 12 month view. So it's a one year people plan that you can break down into some sort of quarterly delivery. So let's say we can break it down into following quarters. So quarter one could be all about stabilizing. So how can we actually stabilize this particular department? Quarter two could be about enabling. Quarter three could be about growing this particular department. And quarter four could be about embedding. So let's start from quarter one. I would be thinking and agreeing with the CTO and their leadership team as to how we can actually stabilize this particular department so we don't lose any more key people to our competitors. Well, let's say in the first quarter, we could be committing to do the following activities. We could run state conversations with key engineers to really understand what their drivers are and motivation and whether they're likely to leave or stay. We could also be thinking about introducing manager coaching sessions. We could also conduct an attrition risk heat map or just a simple attrition analysis to really understand as to what's going on. We could also hold a we heard you or you said we did feedback session on the engagement results. When it comes to quarter two, now we want to start enabling this department to be quite successful. So we could start introducing a career development framework for software roles. We could pilot internal gig opportunities for short-term projects. We could start training managers in how to do better performance reviews and development conversations. In terms of quarter three, this is the quarter when we are looking to grow this particular department. So we could be launching a mentorship program across sites. We could start building a community of practice to encourage peer learning. We could start creating a diversity hiring toolkit for hiring managers and recruiters to use. And the final quarter, quarter four, could be all about embedding. So this is an opportunity to start running talent reviews and succession planning for critical roles. We could start introducing peer-led calibration sessions to ensure fair assessments. And we could start building an engineering employer brand. We could be thinking about careers pages, blog posts, class door updates, and things like that. Final phase, phase four, would be all about showing progress and impact, which is where your beautifully pulled together people plan comes to life. It is very important when you are discussing and agreeing as to what needs to happen over the next 12 months is to understand our baseline metrics or what are the as is metrics or stats that we need to be aware of and we need to discuss with the leadership team if we are happy with some of these stats or whether we want them to change increase or decrease over the next 12 months so as an example let's say we've agreed on the following scorecard with the cto and we continue to report monthly on the progress so the following metrics could be attrition rate at the moment
moment is at 18%, which is quite high, by the way. You want this to be anywhere between 5 and 8%. Manager effectiveness survey, let's say the stats are 58%. Internal mobility is very low, as in there are no internal moves from A to B role, which has caused certain issues. The next metric is about how many people have had career conversations with managers. The current stats tell us it's less than 20%. So what are the targets? Where do we want to be in 12 months time? So this is an opportunity to actually agree realistic targets. We shouldn't be over committing ourselves because some of these activities and actions and initiatives will have to be shared with the leadership teams and wider management teams. As a side note, sometimes a people plan could be just a one month people plan subject to what sort of initiatives you're working on. You can also use it to create employee engagement action plans and all sorts of other things that you could be required to pull together on a regular basis. So it's quite versatile as a tool to, to use going forward. If you would like some additional support and assistance, you can always book one to one calls with me as well as join my expert HR Business Partner Academy. These are weekly sessions I run every Saturday and Sunday for a small monthly subscription fee. You can come around as a guest to check it out if you aren't sure whether you want to join or not. I cover all sorts of technical topics as well as tools and toolkits we can start using straight away in our roles. If you've liked this video, there are many other similar ones on my channel. I would like to point you to my HR Business Partner Masterclass playlist with all sorts of videos helping HR Business Partners start in their roles with confidence and clarity.